Why hello there. I'm Maple Dungeons, and today I'm going to be talking over some Torchlight 2 footage from the second act of the game on my Outlander. Now, I was hesitant to put this out at all because I'm kind of wanting to rush to the end game kind of level of content so I can show that off, but I'm really not progressing that far in this difficulty mode. It is a lot harder than the normal mode which I was playing in before, and I can do it fine, and it's okay, but it takes a while to do, and it's, you know, it's probably twice as long in terms of game time, and I'm playing a lot of games right now, so I don't really have that much time to just put into this game to get to that end game level right away. So what I have here is my Outlander. I, from what I've heard, the Outlander's most powerful move is the Glaive that you can throw and poison all enemies. It's good AoE damage, it's good just general damage, and I'm pretty sure it's the most overpowered thing. But I didn't know that, and what I'm doing is a more strength-based build, a more shooter-based build, which I'm reasonably happy with. I have the rapid fire which gives a lot of knockback. I'm also investing the shotgun mastery which gives more knockback so I can basically keep anything that's melee away from me all the time. Ranged enemies of course will give me a little bit more trouble and that's really what I've been finding so lately I've been investing more into survivability in the form of some extra dodge mastery so I can dodge a lot of enemies attacks and health through vitality and any gear that I can find that will make me more survivable. When I can get to a level that I'm comfortable with where I don't have to be constantly, constantly chugging potions, then I'll go back into looking to get more damage output there. But what I've invested in so far is rapid fire, the shotgun mastery, dodge mastery and some shadow bat bullets which I'm not sure that last one is the best thing to go with the rest of my build but I'm enjoying it and I like seeing those bats go and kill my enemies for me <laughs> sorry if I'm my uh, voice is weird at all I'm feeling a little under the weather so that is something so the Outlander class is something I am enjoying quite a bit, although I still think that I kind of prefer the Berserker. I think that's not really a fault of the Outlander class in any way, shape, or form. I'm just someone who prefers the way melee feels in an action RPG like this. I've always played melee characters in games like this, in Diablo 3, I just played a monk, I never even leveled up any other characters, and I had a lot of fun with my monk. And I really like the Berserker class in this game, it feels powerful, it feels fun to play, so I don't really know. The range just feels like too much kiting for my taste. There's some gonna be there's gonna be some kiting involved in this genre no matter what. You're gonna have to kite even as a melee character, but it's basically has to be all kiting if you're playing a ranged character and it's not something I enjoy too much so for that reason the berserker is a nice class and maybe I should have gone for a melee outlander but I'm still enjoying the shotgun outlander and I'm gonna continue with it for quite a while and I'm definitely gonna continue with him on the current difficulty which is the second highest difficulty but I'm thinking maybe for my next character, once I decide to try out one of the other classes, either the Engineer or the Amber Mage, I might even go back to normal difficulty. Now I can see some big criticisms for that, oh you aren't good enough to do the Veteran mode, whatever, but the thing is, it's a matter of fun. In a game like this, it's not a competitive multiplayer game like Diablo 3 kinda was. It's a single player game that should be played for fun. Some people's idea of fun is a huge challenge. Part of me kind of just likes to sit back and decimate armies and armies of enemies. 
but the main reason I kind of want to just stick to normal mode is you can really do anything you want in that mode. If I want to get through the higher difficulty modes reliably, then I need to really go to the forms and look up a nice build, or I can do the theory crafting myself, look at the math, and find myself the perfect damage build in order to, I don't know, get the most kills per hour. That's not something I really want to do, although I can understand if that's the best way to play for a lot of people. Some people like that heavy theory crafting. I know a lot of people that are, well, like half their playtime is just looking at the numbers and looking at the shit like that. People will look at a game, just a little beta of it, for months before release. Such as that happened with Diablo 3, people were just theory crafting the hell out of that, trying to find the best way to level up. People do that with MMOs, and I can definitely understand that, and I might even see myself doing something like that in an MMO situation, in a competitive situation, but not in a single player game like Torchlight 2. And therein lies the weakness, I think, of the system of Torchlight 2. They've stated they just want to keep that online mode to be a private thing that anyone could just hack, really, and then have LAN modes and single player offline, which I totally agree with, and that is a huge plus because a lot of the player base just wants to play online with a friend and have fun, or they want to have a LAN party and play Torchlight 2. They would have liked to play Diablo 3 too, but that didn't have that option. And a lot of people just want a single player game, and that's always an option in an online mode, but it really gives nothing to them. It, just, it might give a sense of accomplishment, a sense of official accomplishment, but some people just want that offline single player with the no lag. However, back to the weakness, lots of people want a sense of accomplishment. They want something official there saying, you accomplished this, you are this good compared to the average player, even in a single player game like this. This might seem childish to some people, but I don't see it that way. It's just a matter of personal objectives and different ways of playing games. An official server is what gives people that satisfaction. It has an, it has an official record which will at least last for years and is a way of people being able to brag about their stuff. Diablo 2, which is the action RPG that all these games are trying to replicate. They're all trying to replicate the success of that game. Diablo 3 did, if you look at the numbers. And Torchlight 2 is doing pretty great as well. But I'm still waiting for a game that is going to offer both that official server and that uh, private single player experience. And that is going to be a great thing because it's kind of going to be admitting from the devs that maybe their way of doing it isn't the best way for everyone because everyone's different and you should offer something for all of your audience. Anyway, that was a little long for a tangent. It was quite a rant. Um, I am still enjoying the Outlander quite a bit and intend to probably play through the rest of Act 2 today and then work my way through the next. I'll probably do another video once I hit the fourth act to show that off and then definitely I will have some content about the whole map system and some Outlander gameplay in that. Thank you so much for watching guys. I've been Maple Dungeons. If you'd like to see more Torchlight 2 content, please subscribe to the channel, let me know, and check out the rest of my videos. I'll see you next time.